and welcome to Pirate News. I'm Kara Eckert. And I'm Antonio Dunstan. Today we'll give you the latest from across campus, tri-state area, and the globe. We'll also have your Scene Hall sports update and the five-day weather forecast for the South Orange area. Scene Hall nursing students Madison and Brooke Loza will represent Scene Hall in the 8th annual U Pitch NJ concert after winning this year's Pirate Pitch. The U Pitch NJ competition is organized by the U Pitch NJ Consortium, which represents the entrepreneurship education programs at New Jersey's four-year colleges and universities. The competition is being held in partnership with Nokia Bell Labs, and the final round will, of the competition will be live-streamed on Wednesday, May 3rd, from 2 to 4 p.m. The Lowe's winning pirate pitch was for One Stop Eco Shop, an online marketplace for sustainable body and home products. They plan to launch a brick-and-mortar location in Ocean County this summer. Seton Hall's Brownson Speech and Debate Team is celebrating success at two national tournaments, including the 2023 Pi Kappa Delta National Tournament and the American Forensic Association Speech Tournament. Undaunted by the national competition, seven out of eight Seton Hall students advanced to elimination rounds in eight different events, and the team placed eighth overall in team sweepstakes out of 52 programs in attendance during the Pi Kappa Delta National Tournament and took home 13th place in team sweepstakes out of 57 programs in the American Forensic Association Speech Tournament, marking their fourth consecutive top 14 finish in the contest. Now we'll send it over to Andrew, Andrew Aculia with your Scene Hall Sports Update. Andrew? Thanks, Kara. I'm Andrew Aculia with the Scene Hall Sports Update. Starting off with softball, the historic season continues as the team got their 16th win Sunday, their most ever in a Big East season. The Pirates went 1-2 in their series against Villanova, losing a Friday doubleheader 6-2 and 4-2, falling just short of a seventh inning comeback in the latter. They bounced back to a resounding 9-1 win on Sunday in the rain, putting them at 16-5 for, for second place in the Big East standings. Senior Abby Wingo broke the program record 16-game hitting streak Friday, setting a 19-game hitting streak that is still going strong, while holding a team-best .444 batting average. The Pirates' final series before the Big East tournament will be three home games against Butler starting Friday, and if they sweep, they will share the conference regular season championship with first place UConn. Turning over to baseball, the Pirates got some good luck after Barstool Sports' Frank the Tank threw the ceremonial first pitch Wednesday against Lafayette. After beating the Leopards 9-2, the Pirates won two out of three against Xavier this weekend, knocking the Musketeers out of first place in the Big East standings. They won the first game by a resounding 13-2, followed by a 3-2 win Saturday, but lost 7-8 on Sunday in a tough back-and-forth match. Junior Devin Hack was named the Big East Player of the Week after scoring eight hits and seven runs in five games. Scene Hall is now 7-5 for fourth place in the Big East standings and 24-19 overall. They will host Manhattan at Mike Shepard Senior Stadium Wednesday. Finally, the men's golf team fell just short of back-to-back -back Big East championships, placing third following the final round Sunday. The Pirates entered the day trailing top-seeded Marquette by one stroke, but all teams struggled with 50-mile-per-hour wind gusts across the course. Marquette won the title and St. John's placed second, but the Pirates had their fourth straight top three finish in the Big East Championship, which is a program first. That will just about do it for your Seton Hall Sports Update. Once again, I'm Andrew Coulia. Now back to Karen and Antonio with more news you need to know. Thanks, Andrew. Rutgers University and its three unions have come to a tentative agreement after nearly a year of contract negotiations and a strike. On April 10th, the unions called the first faculty strike in Rutgers' 257-year history after 10 months of stalled contract negotiations with the school. But Governor Phil Murphy called both sides to Trenton to negotiate, and on April 15th, Murphy announced the framework of a potential agreement between the two parties had been reached. Strikers returned to the classrooms, though they stressed the final, that a final deal needed to be agreed on and threatened to resume the strike if talks faltered. In the coming days, more than 9,000 union members will come together and vote on whether to accept the new contract set to run through 2026. The new agreement includes pay raises and better job security. New Jersey Institute of Technology recently announced the appointment of Tiek C. Lim as the president at the school's ninth president. This comes after a nationwide surge and a unanimous vote of NGIT's Board of Trustees on January 5, 2022. President-elect Lim, who also will be appointed a distinguished professor of mechanical engineering, will begin his NGIT ten tenure on July 1, 2023. The appointment of Dr. Lim as NGIT's next president is a result of his emergence 
from an exceptionally talented pool of candidates, said Robert Cohen, chair of NJIT's Board of Trustees. Tiek has incredibly impressive credentials as a scholar and senior administrator. President Lim was on, Jan on NJIT's campus this past Wednesday, meeting and taking pictures with NJIT students. Dozens of protesters gathered Saturday inside the South Orange train station to demand answers about the status of a teacher who allegedly held Daylin Wilkins, an autistic nonverbal black toddler, upside down by his ankles as he dangled in the air last month. The incident allegedly occurred minutes before dismissal on March 27th in a pre-kindergarten classroom at Mount Rose Early Childhood Center. The teacher accused of holding the boy by his ankles was suspended on March 28th when one of the teachers present for the alleged assault informed the principal the Wilkins family wasn't notified of the incident when they arrived to pick up the toddler that day, but instead was informed more than 48 hours after it took place. The family claims to not have heard additional, any additional information from the administration in over a month, despite making multiple requests for updates about the teacher involved and any additional discipline handed down. The name of the teacher involved also has not been released by the district, but a further investigation is being conducted. Two teens were rescued from an old train tunnel in Edgewater after flash flooding from this weekend's rain showers caused the waters to rise. Firefighters swam into the tunnel and pulled the two teens out of the tunnel after they had been stranded inside the tunnel for several hours. Edgewater Fire er, Lieutenant Robert Jacobson stated that the teens said they were in the tunnel for about two hours. They would seen something on the internet where they wanted to explore the tunnel. Just think before you do things, especially with the weather outside, Jacobson added. That the teens were okay, but were taken to a nearby hospital to get checked out. Now we'll send it over to Andrew Reculia with your five-day weather forecast for the South Orange area. Andrew? Thanks, Antonio. I'm Andrew Reculia once again with your five-day weather forecast for the South Orange area. Make sure you have a boat this week because there's going to be a lot of rain. A river flood warning is starting Monday at 8 p.m. until Wednesday at 2 a.m. Today we will have a high of 56 degrees and a low of 44 degrees. There will be showers in the morning and then cloudy skies in the afternoon. On Wednesday there will be a high of 55 and a low of 44 with cloudy skies and later showers. Thursday we will have a high of 56 and a low of 45 degrees with more cloudy skies early and a few showers developing later. Friday will have a high of 59 and a low of 45 with a mix of clouds and sun in the morning giving way to a few afternoon showers. And finally, Saturday, we'll see a high of 66 degrees and a low of 51 degrees with partly cloudy skies that will wrap, with partly cloudy skies. That will wrap up the five-day forecast for the South Orange area. Once again, I'm Andrew Kulia. Now back to the desk with news from across the country. Thanks, Andrew. First Republic Bank has been taken over by the FDIC and will be sold to J.B. Morgan Chase, making this the third major bank to go under in less than two months. The FDIC announced the move Monday morning, stating that J.P. Morgan, the largest bank in the U.S., will be purchasing almost all of First Republic's bank deposits and assets. A spokesperson for the Treasury Department said in a statement, the banking system remains sound and resilient, and Americans should feel confident in the safety of their deposits and the ability of the banking system to fulfill its essential function of providing credit to businesses and families. The move comes after First Republic's stock fell over 75 percent in the last 30 days. J.P. Morgan Chase CEO said in a statement Monday about the purchase, our government invited us and others to step up and we did our financial strength, capabilities and business models allow us to develop a bid to execute the transaction in a way to minimize costs to the deposit insurance fund. First Republic's 84 branches in eight states will reopen as of Monday as branches of J.P. Morgan Chase. That's going to wrap up today's episode of Pirate News. I'm Kara Eckert. And I'm Antonio Dunstan. Be sure to tune into PTV's YouTube channel for everything you need to know. You can also check out PTV's social media for quick updates about happenings around campus and more PTV content. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. And have